Good afternoon, Gamecock Nation. Patrick DeMar here for Capital City Sports. Got no episode today, but we are talking March Madness. I'm alongside Eli Brand and Ethan Still. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, in the Sweet 16 so far, we've seen victories by Kansas State, Loyola Chicago, considering, continuing the upset run, mm -hmm. Sister Jean, uh, Florida State, and Michigan. And then tonight, we've got a game between Villanova and West Virginia, Texas Tech, Purdue, Duke and Syracuse and Clemson and Kansas. But before we get into that, how are our brackets doing? Doing all right, or are they completely busted? I'm first place in the pool. I wouldn't say I'm doing great. I but think you I'm are winning. We've, so Capital yeah, City Sports, good. we've got a group bracket pool, and Eli's in first place. Um, comfortably second to last, <laughs> but I have three Final Four teams left. So like, I'm I'm not drowning yet. I'm above water still. Who was your champion though? Virginia. How'd that go? Not well. Okay. Not well. No. no. Not well. <laughs> uh, I believe. I know. I picked Duke. You picked Duke as well. Yeah, I believe. I did. Right. A lot of guys picked Duke in our mm -hmm. our group. Right. It's the only choice. I mean, they're, they're arguably the most talented team. I remember after um, they played Rhode Island, the head coach of Rhode Island said that they're like an NBA team. Playing yeah. against them, it's just not fair. Well, right. the um, smallest player on their team, six five. So right. They've pretty got much it is. Yeah. Marvin Bagley the third, who's going to be a top five pick, probably. Easy. Top two. Top Easy. two. Oh yeah. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., who you could say would maybe sneak into the top ten. A lot of oh, NBA yeah. execs like him. Yep. Obviously, uh, Grayson Allen. Say what you want about him, but he's an experienced player. He's been yep. there before. Um, Trayvon du Duvall, Gary Trent Jr. They've got all kinds of talent across the board. They're deep. Mm -hmm. They're probably. Would you say that they're the favorite as far as who's left? I don't them know. and Villanova, I it's, would say. It's them and Villanova. Nova. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and I would say, honestly, like, you could make a strong argument for Michigan as well. Michigan is a big sleeper. They're hot. They've Michigan, been hot. They're, they're hot, and they kind of went under the radar just because they're that three seed. You know, everyone's scared of the ones and twos. Once you hit three and four, that's where it's just like your average good basketball teams. But Michigan is... I don't know if they came out and said which three seed was better than the others, but th they're scary. They worry me, though, because they've done this before. They've made the national title game with Trey Burke. They've, had, they've gone on runs where they've won the Big Ten. They won it last year, didn't they? I don't know if they, they didn't I even make the Final Four last year. I don't, I don't remember. I think this was the second year in a row they won the Big Ten tournament, and they okay. didn't even make the Final Four last year. So they worry me thinking that they could go and win a national title, but they definitely could. Especially with heroics like Jordan Poole hitting a mid-court threes to win games. Yeah, right. The, so the anything can happen. Legs spread apart, shot, yeah. and just crazy. Back to uh, Villanova, though. They're probably the highest overall seed left, I yeah. believe. We've got them as a one they seed left. They were the second overall. And we've got yeah. Kansas Virginia. as a one seed left. Yeah. One thing that I will say about Villanova and their matchup against West Virginia, Villanova's usually very, very good at holding onto the ball. They're near the top in the country as far as limiting turnovers. But mm -hmm. West Virginia, with that press defense... Yeah. What kind of troubles can that give them? I mean, it, I don't know the answer to this. How much has Villanova seen press this year? Do, do, do we know? It's I'm not a Big East fan, to be honest. I, I was going to say, I'm not either. I don't, I don't follow <laughs> a lot of them, but I think it's going to come down to that. It's going to come down to the experience dealing with it, right? You've see, all seen games where someone gets pressed and they're not used to it and they just collapse, right? Yeah. I've watched some South Carolina games this year. And uh, every time we pass the ball, I have a heart attack. Like, yeah. I, I don't think Villanova is going to be that team, but I, I just personally don't know how much experience they well, have. Villanova, with it, and I think it'll come down to that. The conference they're in worries you also because they played Xavier this year three times, and Xavier was also number one seed, and right. they beat Xavier all three times. I'm pretty sure they didn't play him in the Big East tournament, did they? I don't believe so. They might have beat them twice. Speaks. Purdue, Purdue beat them. Right. Not Purdue. Um, Providence knocked Xavier out, yeah. and they played them. Providence yeah. beat. Xavier twice, right? I think so. Speaking yeah. of Xavier, though, they they went down pretty early. I had them in my Final Four. There was a couple other big teams. Obviously, UVA State. losing to UMBC mm -hmm. in the first round. That's right. never we've never seen that no. before. Michigan State, Syracuse. Michigan Hughes. State. That's yeah. right. I had that. Arizona repaid. went down. A lot of people thought they were going to go deep in the mm -hmm, tournament. Mm -hmm. What 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 are you guys? What thoughts do you two have as far as these big? Uh, sort of top tier teams falling so far in the tournament. Is that a seeding issue or is it more of a reflection of how basketball has regressed in the college game? Well, this, well, this year there was a lot more parity. There weren't many big teams that were going to go out and dominate. Everyone thought that Duke was going to, but the freshman factor got to them a little bit too early, a bit too much, and they lost, dropped a lot of games. Right. right. I had Xavier and Michigan State losing in the second round in my bracket, so I expected that to happen. Um, the thing that will surprise you, obviously Virginia. They lost their sixth man, but they still shouldn't be losing to the University right. of Maryland, Baltimore County right. in the first round. So I think it just shows this year there's a lot more parity. Like 2015, there were three number one seeds in the Final Four. There are years like that, and then there are years like this. This year was just 
exceptional yep. in the upsets and the blue bloods that went down early. Yeah, going back to you saying years like it happens uh, where, you know, some years it's a big team, some years it's a small team. You think back when VCU made that Final Four mm -hmm. run, it's just, I'm sure. Shaka I mean, Smart's still living off of that. Yeah, he is. <laughs> but what, what's the highest seed possible that can be from the South? Is it the three? Is the three still alive up there? The nine uh, and the or, eleven are playing the for the and Final the Four. Are playing so for the a Final nine. Four. K State, okay. Loyola, Chicago. So I lied. Yeah, that's. I mean, something crazy like that is bound to happen. Yeah. I, personally, that's why I love March Madness. That's why it's called March Madness. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just going back to the initial question, the talk, the strength of the NCAA as a whole this year, or maybe not the strength, but the consistency. Mm -hmm. The parity. Just, just isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, good or bad, it's just, you know, teams are competing, and every game is a toss-up, I think. And that makes it really exciting for me. Right. I feel like usually we always have that one kind of powerhouse team every yeah. single year, whether it's Duke mm -hmm. or Kansas or Kentucky. North with Carolina all the past two years. Right, yeah. UNC. Yeah. And I think this year, a lot of people would argue that Virginia was that team for most of the season. Mm -hmm. The defense that they had, uh, just how the consistent pacing, they yeah. were. They beat a lot of quality teams, mm -hmm. and then they lose in the first round of the tournament. Obviously, they lost their well, sixth Their end, system but. killed them, too. Right. If they would have changed their system and sped UMBC up, they could have turned them over a lot, probably had a different result in that game. Mm -hmm. But when yeah. they got down 10, 15, they haven't faced that this year. And they kept playing that slow, drag-it-on offense. And every mm -hmm. time they didn't score, UMBC would go into three, and it just put it out of reach, about 10 minutes left in that game. Yeah. Now, would you two say that UMBC is the biggest surprise of the tournament? Is that no question? I'd say Loyola Chicago was the biggest surprise. Right. Yeah. If UMBC would have made it a little farther, won a few more games than they would have been, but right. Loyola making the Elite Eight is definitely the biggest surprise to well, me. Well, you and I both had Loyola Chicago in our Sweet 16. I had them in the Elite Eight and changed it last right. minute. Right. Yeah. So as far, that, that brings my argument as to how can, if we had them at least going that far, obviously they were still upset picks, but mm -hmm. how can we consider that the biggest surprise? It's great that they're continuing. I think they're going to make it to the Final Four yeah. now. I, I don't see it stopping, just yeah. the I'd tempo to that they play it. with, how yeah. they've got a mm -hmm. lot of experience, a lot of uh, transfers and stuff like that that are seniors that used to play at big programs. I think they're going to go a long <laughs> way, but are they still the biggest surprise of the tournament? For me, answering that, I think... When you make those type of picks, upset picks, it, sometimes we're making those on, well, this would be cool if it happened. Like, I don't know how much, and you two maybe can answer this, how realistically you expected them to go that far. Yeah. And especially there's a lot of other factors of Virginia was gone. They never had to face Virginia. Uh, who was the two seed that lost in that? Uh, uh, it was Cincinnati. It? Yeah, Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati yeah. was going. Boston, to... They had. Was it Nevada that beat them? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. They had them beat the whole. They were game up by twenty three points. Yeah. At right. One point. So, it's it's. We know they can make it that far, but did we expect it? Do we expect those other factors to be yeah. there? I think that's what adds to the surprise factor of Loyola. So it's a little Me? bit of we yeah. we had the upset and then having good luck is good. Luck. And another yeah, yeah, another yeah. team though, I know we hate to say it, but Clemson has been right. a huge surprise. I yeah. thought they'd lose to New Mexico State plus, because of how many points New Mexico State scored. I think score. as USC students, we all wanted them to yeah. lose to New Mexico State, but if we were honest with ourselves, well, they lost their two best players on the team too. Oh, oh Gabe DeVoe's the best that. player remaining on the team. Dante Grantham was their best player going into the season by far, and he was out. He's out, he's been injured for the past month and he's right. not going to play the entire tournament right. and they played the SEC champions who also their best players out for the season too they beat them by 40 yeah that's I, ridiculous after Auburn we beat them in the last couple weeks they wet the bed against Alabama in the SEC tournament yeah. I honestly kind of expected they were falling Clemson. off I didn't pick them to get this far but I kind of expected them to get this 40, far though. yeah that's that's much but I, I want to another team that's a surprise for me that we're not really talking about Florida State Florida State Florida they, State, yeah. who they're a middle of the road ACC team. Granted, ACC fantastic basketball, but like they, they weren't on my radar at mm -hmm. all. I'm happy for Leonard Hamilton. They're, too. they're Good still North playing. Carolina, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, we've got a little bit of time left, so I'm gonna just gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna go through each region of the bracket. Just gonna get you two to get me your quick picks for the Final Four. So okay. Okay. Start with the West. We've got Michigan and Florida State left. Who do you two have? Michigan. 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 I, I just mentioned Florida State. I don't know if they can keep it going. We mentioned Michigan's hot. Guard okay. play. Michigan now we're going to the, guard play. the South. Kansas State, Loyola, Chicago. Is Sister Jean gonna make it all the way to San Antonio? I think so. Kansas State's, they're, they're a short team. 
Kansas State is definitely short. They're good at handling the ball. They're good at getting in transition. But I think Loyola Chicago will win because of their size and yep. the Cinderella story. Okay. It has to keep now going. in the East, we've got Villanova, West Virginia, Texas Tech, Purdue. That's probably the most stacked region left. Mm -hmm. Who do we have coming out of that gauntlet? My bracket is hinging on Texas Tech right now. I've got them as my runner-ups, actually. So I'm hoping for Texas Tech, but it's hard to pick against Nova. It's like the Patriots effect from the NFL season. It's hard to pick against, against the Patriots and feel confident. I'm feeling the same thing here, but I'm going to go Texas Tech. I have Purdue beating Villanova to go to the Final Four, but okay. that was before their center broke his elbow. Well, the NCAA. The he may come back because right. the Purdue engineering students threw something together for a brace. Right. So if he comes back, I'll feel better. I still think Purdue will make it because I think Villanova tends to crash out of these tournaments before they get to the Final Four. Now, when they do get to the Final Four, they win it. But I don't think they have what it, they, I, they still haven't proven it to me. Even though they have a national title, I still don't believe they can do it. Okay. And then finally in the Midwest, we've got Duke, Syracuse, Clemson, Kansas. Before, I know you're going to say Duke, but before mm -hmm. I get there, Syracuse did beat Duke, Duke once already this no, season. No, they didn't. I believe, I thought they, they didn't. Did. They no. lost to him by 20 in Cameron. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, either way, uh, is that... Duke, are you sticking with that as far as the Midwest? I have Duke, but also have Clemson beating Kansas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, that'll be interesting. You, yeah. Ethan, what do you, I, what do you I've think? I've got Duke. They're looking scary. It's They're the Duke. most talented team yeah. left by far. Yep. All right. So you've got Duke in your national championship. You've got them winning. Yeah. And your national championship winner. Uh, I'd hate for them to play Loyola Chicago, though. That would be sad. That would be. Mm, <laughs> I, I'm going to have to go Duke at this point. Duke? Honestly, mm -hmm. it's hard to see them losing to anyone left unless Kansas beats Clemson. They're also the type surprises. of team that could lose to Syracuse by 30 right. tonight, though. True. So you never know. True. At this point, you know, we've seen a lot. Anything can happen to yeah. that point in the tournament. Yep. It's been a great March Madness so far. We've got a couple more rounds left to go. Mm -hmm. This has been Patrick DeMar, Eli Brand, and Ethan Still with Capital City Sports. We'll see you guys next week.